ABC 27 HD's Political Insight with Senator Bob McKnight. Senator, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Anne. All right, well, tonight we wanted to talk about what's happening with redistricting. Yeah. Now, a Florida Senate committee approved a revised redistricting plan just today right. for the chamber. The reapportionment committee voted today 21 to 6 for this proposal. Now, as I understand, the full chamber will begin floor action tomorrow. And the legislature, of course, is in this special session to make adjustments to the Senate map. The Florida Supreme Court justices said the Senate map violated anti gerrymandering standards. Standards, and the justices did uphold the House plan. So talk to us a little bit about what happened today and what you expect to happen on the floor. Okay. Today the Senate did pass within committee and now goes to the full Senate a plan which essentially worked to resolve the problems identified by the court. I think there were, as you said, eight seats. The problems can range from the boundaries in terms of definition, the criteria by which those boundaries are, are uh, determined, uh, access uh, to one's elected representative is really the heart of the issue. And of course, the Democrats and Republicans will try to position themselves to favor one party or the other. That is intended to not be the case if the court is upheld. So talk about why our viewers should care about this yeah. whole process. There are probably there's several reasons, and one is it essentially defines who will represent us because they have the demographic information about the constituents and it can be altered or changed to favor one party or another. Uh, essentially, it can also determine how many people represent a certain state. Because of the technology available and it can be manipulated. You can adjust it to favor one party or the other. That was the concern the court had raised. Another factor is it's in place for 10 years. It'll be another 10 years before we do this again. And lastly, again, the heart of the court concern is there are certain constitutional rights all of us have, you and I, equal access, equal access to our representatives. That needs to be protected, and that's why the court has gone back and said, just a minute, senators, you've been a little quick here. We're okay on 22 of the seats, another eight. Uh, excuse me, 32 of the seats, another eight need to be readjusted. Uh, now the Senate committee has passed out the revised plan and the full Senate will vote on it uh, later this week and next week. Senator, I know uh, from reading your book, The Golden Years of the Florida Legislature, right. that you went through reapportionment yes. when you were in state office. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that experience. Well, it was interesting because I was not running again myself, so I didn't have a vested interest. And what I observed, Anne, was very troubling. It was a manipulation of the data to favor one party against another. Worse than that, it became essentially a marketplace, trading the McKnight vacant seat for other priorities. It was exactly what our forefathers did not have in mind when they talked about equal access for all citizens to their elected representatives. Do you expect that that is happening today? Uh, I hope not. I have not been privileged to see this latest version that's come out. I do know Senator Gates, who is the author of it, and I think he's an honorable person. I think he will make every effort to make try to clear. accommodate the concerns the court has raised. Just quickly, do you think that this is the best process for how to redistrict? And I'd rather see a third party do it. Somebody who doesn't have a vested interest, I realize the argument who but us who have served in office can really do that. But uh, I'm uncomfortable with the whole idea of my being a beneficiary of the work I'm doing. I'd rather see a third party do it. Very insightful, Senator. Thank you. So